Be sure it's true when you say I love you. It's a sin to tell a lie. Millions of hearts have been broken just because these words were spoken. I love you. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is my regular blog. You know, some people are outraged by, by problems they have with their wife, with their children. Some people are outraged with what's going on in their business. But I am so outraged when I see fraud and fakery and blatant out-and-out -out lies. This is disgusting to me, whether you're a Democrat or Republican. I don't care if you're a Jew or a Gentile, black or white. I don't care because people always like to connect it with some kind of prejudice if you attack somebody. Because why are you picking on him? <clears throat> I'm picking on John McCain today. John McCain turns out to be a blatant, out-and-out, -out, disgusting lowlife. I never said this about him before. I always showed respect for him and when the, and the whole horrible thing he went through during the war and the fact that he's a real hero and I remind myself of it every time I look at him and your heart bleeds for what he went through. But if you have any decency, you don't care only about, about what he sacrificed. You care also about, about honesty, integrity. Loyalty to America and to, and to any concept of morality. What right did he have to come out with this disgusting lie that he just came up with that uh, when he started himself in a tight race at 50-50 and he didn't know he was going to win or lose and all of a sudden his whole ambition about the presidency might go up in flames if he lose. This is the one crucial, most important of all the ones. And he said, I got to find some, I got to grasp at something like a man drowning before I pass away. I got to come up with something. It's an amazing thing that he would sacrifice his life as a prisoner for this country, but he would never sacrifice an election for this country. An election is more important than his life because look what he was willing to go through. He was practically ready to die. He didn't know if he might die there any minute and he was ready to do that because of, the, because of this country, of his patriotism. He was ready to give his life for his country but he's not willing to give up an election for this country. He keeps saying all the time, I don't care about an election. I'm the only person who would, would never sacrifice. I would never sacrifice this war for an election. An election means nothing to me compared to winning the war and I would gladly lose the election compared to the war. Maybe he would gladly lose an election compared to the war, but he won't gladly lose an election compared to, to winning an election. <laughs> when the relevance of the war is not involved, his life, his life he was ready to sacrifice, but he's not willing to sacrifice an election. An election is more important to him than sacrificing anything else. He could give up everything in his life, but as long as he's still living, don't tell me I could lose an election and nothing is more important to me than winning. I'm ready to die and give everything away for my country, but don't tell me I might lose an election. He came up with this filthy, disgusting lie that he Romney wanted timetables. He needed to invent something to, take the, to change the subject as fast as possible because he admitted he knows nothing about economics. And all of a sudden, economics became the only thing they're talking about. So he said to himself, where could I go to breathe some fresh air? How the hell do I get out of here? Hello? He talked about timetables. What timetables? Tables. All he talked about is the truth. The truth of the matter is, the Romney was discussing what everybody is discussing, what any normal person would be discussing. The fact that you should not talk about timetables. The democratic mantra is timetables. He said we should not talk about timetables. That's something the president should talk about privately with the people who lead Iraq. Let them discuss it if they want to and discuss it in their own way, quietly and privately, so that there would be no such thing as the enemy hearing about timetables. Do you believe that there should be a, a, a timetable in withdrawing the troops? Well, there's no question but that the president and, uh, and, and Prime Minister al-Maliki uh, have to have a series of timetables and milestones that they speak about. But those shouldn't be for public uh, pronouncement. You don't want the enemy to understand how long they have to wait in the weeds until you're going to be gone. You want to have a series of things you want to see accomplished in terms of the strength of the Iraqi military and the Iraqi police and the leadership of the, of the Iraqi uh, government. So you wouldn't do it publicly because the president has said flat out that he will veto anything the Congress passes about a timetable for truth, troop withdrawals. As president, well, would you do the same? Yeah, can, well, of course. Can you, can you imagine a setting where, where uh, during the Second World War we said to the, uh, the Germans, gee, if we haven't reached the uh, Rhine by this date, well, we'll go home. Or if we haven't gotten this accomplished, we'll, uh, we'll pull up and leave. You don't, you don't publish that to your enemy or they just simply lie and wait until that time. 
So, of, of course, you have to uh, work together to create timetables and milestones, but you don't do that with the, with the opposition. That was the point about not talking about timetables. Not that you shouldn't talk about it. What if two generals were talking about leaving the war? Everybody says you must have an exit strategy to leave a war. Nobody says we should stay there forever. There should be no such thing. As a matter of fact, if there's no exit strategy, everybody attacks you because you don't have an exit strategy. So they're talking about the possibility of an exit strategy. If two generals would talk about a possibility of an exit strategy, would he say they talked about timetables and you should fire the generals? That's how you should fire the president. That's how you should fire Romney. Romney deserves the job because he's an honest man. You're a liar. And what you said is disgusting. And you should don't deserve to win an election on fraud. Give up your fakery. I don't care what kind of a hero you are. So be sure it's true When you say I love you It's a sin to tell a lie Be sure it's true When you say I love you, honey Cause you got sense enough to know it's a sin to tell a lie Whole lot of folks' heart is done, been broken Just over a whole lot of foolish words that's been spoken I love you, yes I do I love you If you break my heart I'll die So be sure it's true When you say I love you It's a sin To tell